Yeah, I'll just keep going and uh, anyway, it will be like an open kind of uh, flexible discussion. So I guess you can just, just you know, come up with questions as they, as they come up. And, um, so I'll try to cover the, the basics of the um, of, of quantum mechanics and what we're doing here and what we're looking for. And then I'll try to take over uh, the, the, the direction towards what we can, what possible experiments we think we can do in space and, and where we actually are currently in terms of, of actually implementing this. So uh, even though in the beginning it sounds a bit like science fiction, later on uh, I hope I'll be able to, to convince you that it's actually something realistic and, and hopefully uh, in a few years we can actually do it. So first of all we have to speak about when we talk about quantum communication and quantum optics, we have to um, revisit the concept of a photon. So photons are the particles of light, uh, the, 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 the smallest energy unit of light, so it's, they're indivisible, you can't split them further. And, and this kind of quantization of the light field was one of the key the developments which, which started quantum mechanics um, a bit more than 100 years ago, actually. So these days, all of this kind of uh, uh, philosophical quantum mechanics uh, or me metaphysical, it, it has been at some stage, are uh, turned into, into a uh, almost um, technological field, uh, which is called these days quantum information. So quantum information processing, um, where, where what we do is in quantum information processing, we redefine the concept of the classical bit. So you all know about this, there's the zero and the one, this is this unit of information. And it turns out, if one expresses um, uh, quantum, uh, kind of bit, in terms of quantum system, one can define a quantum bit. And this quantum bit has got some unique features. So I just, I'm just noticing the slides are not necessarily in the best order. Um, I'd like to point out, uh, so if you want to encode this quantum information, this quantum bit onto photons, um, uh, we have to speak about the two distinct states, like the zero, there's a zero and a one state for a quantum system. And for instance, we can uh, utilize the polarization of the photons as the zero and one. So for instance, a horizontal polarized photon we call zero, and the vertical polarized polarized photon we call one. So those are our two distinct states. And, and now, if this is a quantum bit, um, it has the very interesting feature that we can now bring this into a superposition of the two states. And that's something which only exists, uh, uh, this concept only exists in quantum mechanics. So uh, not only can, that, can the, the particle be in zero or one, the two states, but it can actually be an arbitrary superposition of those two stays at the same time. And that's a fundamentally, it's, it's a very counterintuitive concept. It, it implies a lot of magic or uh, strange kind of features, which I mean, not see as magic. I like to see it as the magic of quantum mechanics. Uh, for instance, um, it means uh, a particle can be at two positions at the same time. So if you think of those, inter those interference experiments, like the double split, you, only if we don't know which split the particle gets through the photon, then we will see interferences. Then we have this superposition. Uh, so it's a very fundamental concept in quantum mechanics, and, and today uh, there's still no good way of understanding it. Uh, so there's been a famous example by Schrödinger, you might know this, the Schrödinger cat, where um, Schrödinger was one of the founders of, of the formalism of quantum mechanics. Of Quantum um, uh, he pushed this, this concept to the extreme and he, he made he thought up of a uh, a Gedanken experiment where there's a cat inside a box, it's enclo fully enclosed and isolated, and the cat is either dead or alive at the same time. And there is no distinction between those two possibilities. Only if you take a look, then it will collapse, it's called the collapse of the wave function. It, it will collapse into one of two possibilities. But if, and, uh, before you look, before we extend open the box, it is in this kind of position. 
Now, a bit less extreme than, than this kind of cat, which is generalized, can be a uh, entanglement of two photons, for instance. So there, the superposition is between two particles which can be separated, but now the two particles are correlated in their, in their uh, property, for instance, polarization, and they could both be, for instance, um, so, well, this is the time state, where they're actually in different states. So one is in the horizontal state, and then the second photon is in the vertical state. So this, by the way, is the quantum mechanics notation. Uh, it's, it's at the first side, it's maybe a bit um, uh, strange or weird. So the notation just means one and two is the one with the first and the second particle. And, and this is essentially a label of the state. So that's all that. And, and then there is this superposition. We have the second possibility. So here is a minus sign, but it's the same as like a plus, essentially just a different phase. Where the first particle now is in the B polarization, and the second one in the H of the horizontal polarization. So now we can't distinguish those two cases. So, so they're both, even though they are strictly correlated, we don't know which one is happening, which one is actually um, uh, existing. And quantum mechanics tells us none of them, they're both existing at the same time. And, and this leads to those strange correlations uh, where, where distant particles seem to, to be still connected. It's called non locality of quantum mechanics. Einstein created the term spooky action at a distance. So we don't understand what's going on. It, it seems to even violate relativity, where one of the key assumptions in relativity is that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. Information. Uh, and this seems to be my idea. So, if I go back now to this previous slide, um, so photons are actually good carriers of such quantum information. Um, essentially, one could use any kind of quantum system. It could be atoms, it could be superconductors, and, and spins. And so, so at, at IQC, all kinds of systems are studied, for instance. But if we talk about uh, communication in particular, the photons are, of course, the ideal candidate. They are kind of isolated, they are fast, they, they are isolated from the surroundings, they don't, they don't uh, get disturbed or interact very much. And at the same time, it's actually a challenge that they don't interact with each other. Um, but that's maybe a different story that relates more to quantum computing, which we will not enter today. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so we will use the photons for quantum communication. And it turns out that these kind of, uh, um, how should I say, these kind of mysteri mysterious quantum effects, they have led to uh, a new field of applications, which are these quantum information technologies. And one of those protocols is quantum communication. 